to see our presentation. Um, we outline our project goals for you. We talk about a little about the acquisition and conservation history of both murals. Our day-to-day -day process and some examples. Technological applications we used. Observations and conclusions, and finally some well-deserved thank yous. <laughs> so when we set out first to begin condition reporting through these murals, we laid out our goals, which included the total condition survey obtaining information on the payment surface and the structural integrity of both murals, um, utilizing special photography, reflective like transformation imaging to get a better sense of the surface texture, multispectral imaging with ultraviolet and infrared light, and we're encouraged to blog about our experiences. We do not intend to go too much into the historical context or significance of the murals as pieces of art in this presentation. We will just say briefly that they came from Southeast China and were made around the 15th century. The art dealer known as C.T. Lu had it removed from their original location by facing wall segments of about 60 by 90 centimeters of paper to secure the surface, and then cutting them off the wall. These smaller segments were then shipped to a studio in Paris, where they were assembled into the larger panels we see today. This process left, with few exceptions, fairly, fairly straight grid lines of restoration throughout the murals. The larger panels that we see today are more uniform in C688, which is the left-hand mural in the Milwaukee into Rotunda facing both of them. Um, they are fabricated with three to four, three to four of the smaller cutout sections. C492, the right-hand mural, has some more interestingly shaped panels. An initial and somewhat general condition observation is that neither mural is complete. In C688, the theme is the Medicine Buddha and the Twelve Divine Generals. There are a few drawings indicating figures cut off on the right side. And considering the lack of symmetry and the number of generals visible in the part of the mural we have, there were probably another four figures. Using the more complete looking half of the mural to give us an idea, we figured that the complete mural would likely be a little bit more like 35 and a half, 34 and a half, or 35 feet wide. The portion that we have currently is just shy of 29 feet. In similar form, we think there are as possible as many as three figures missing from the left side of 492. The subject matter is the Buddha blazing light, and he is usually some variation of the nine luminaries, a group of figures that includes five planets two eclipses, and the sun and the moon. Knowing this, we are definitely missing the figure of Mars and Saturn. The mural is currently a little over 30 and a half feet wide, but should be more like 33 and a half feet. There are also portions at the top of the both murals that might have been nice to have, but they are likely to have been in too poor of a condition to salvage. This is the centermost top region of C688. The Buddha's halo would likely have been complete at the top, and mirroring the figure on the left, that is holding flowers, there's indication of another figure. I know it's difficult to see, but the outline of beads and fabric being between the clouds is indicative of a lower portion of the figure's clothing. As you can see, though, there's a major crack across the top. Also, while the figure on the left is at least present, she's also heavily restored. The first step of the condition survey actually occurred about a year ago. Joe Elliott, a photographer and professor, who works with the Penn's Historic Preservation Program team, and over the course of a few evenings, photograph the murals in sections in high resolution. It is these resulting images that we use along with Adobe Photoshop on tablet computers to report all of the various conditions. Working with these high resolution photos in Adobe Photoshop, we organize the various conditions by assigning a color to each one and separating them into layers. These layers can be generalized into three different categories, historical, structural, and surface. The way this project was approached was heavily based on a survey of the related murals in 2002 at the Nelson Atkins Museum of Art in Kansas City, Missouri. Many of the layers and corresponding colors came directly from, the, from their procedure, though we did, did end up changing and adding some. Using the CT Lou layer, we marked in bright green areas that were fully restored by CT Lou's workshop you saw briefly earlier the picture of the pole mural marked with green lines, because this layer is also the best indication for where those smaller panels are and were cut off the monastery walls. But there are other spots of all shapes and sizes that CT Lou have restored. We started with only the CT Lou option for pain and restoration, but quickly noticed two different styles between which we thought it might be good to differentiate. 
We know that shortly after the murals were installed in the museum, a woman named Mary Louise Baker was hired to take some restorative measures. In her letters, there is mention that she used plastic wood along the edges, tinted with watercolor, which is a direct quote from a letter that she had written. And it is these sections who marked orange in its own layer. Mary Louise Baker's restoration is quite different in style to C.T. Lou's in that there is no attempt to connect lines or color match the areas that are filled in. The reinforced line layer differs from the aforementioned historic restoration layers in that it is painted on the original surface of the mural, not film material. For the most part, this was presumably done to soften transition lines. Um, and to soften transition lines, um, between film material and the original surface, or to enhance the original black lines. This particular image is an extremely, one of the most heavily restored or reinforced areas, um, bordering on the point of. Graphs and active delimitation are both 
structural issues that are visually discernible. In many cases, the cracks in active delamination correspond with one another. Structural cracks were just that, significant cracks that pose imminent threats not only to the structural integrity of the mural, but to the painted surface. Active delamination was a bit more tricky. In this photo, you can see at the bottom where the surface is actively um, delaminating from the plaster backing. In other areas, it is not quite so obvious, but by tapping the mural lightly with a fingernail, you could audibly discern where it was hollow and actively separating versus where it was not. And we marked it with this pink color. Metal detecting. Metal detecting was conducted because at the beginning of this project, we did not really know how the panels were put together or how they were standing in the rotunda. Documentation in the 1920s was not at its finest, so the structure, the structure behind each panel holding it there is not known. We were hoping that identifying where metal was would help shed some light on how the murals were standing. The pinpointing metal detector worked wonderfully. When we first started metal detecting C688 with, we were getting we were getting very few small exceptions, a pretty straightforward pattern that made sense. We started to think silly things like this is going to be boring, maybe we should stop doing this for now and focus on more important things. The universe heard us, and the second half of C688 looked like this. <laughs> <laughs> the pinpointing metal detector was a godsend, but it wasn't until later that we figured out that we could actually calibrate it and get a finer sense. For the areas with the most curious metal structures, we did a second pass with a metal detector, set to be more selective. This is not so this not so very elaborate calibration tool that was created to make sure the second pass would be uniform and sensitivity for the whole project. Every time the metal detector was turned on, it was about four centimeters away from the piece of metal. We'll get more into the specifics of metal detecting in the applied technology segment of the presentation. Finally, the technical notes layer was our condition was worth mentioning but did not fit into any other categories previously mentioned, we used text to explain the issue. An example of something worthy of a technical note might be modern paint that looks suspiciously similar to what they used to paint the frame, or this, a screw placed right into the step surface of the mural. This is an example of a completely assessed panel with all of the layers present little bit resembling a Jackson Pollock. Um, but the nice thing about Photoshop and layers is that we're able to visualize one or two or all 15 at a time. And now we'll pass it over to Kasha. Um, and, but it's totally worth it. 
they find quite a few interesting spots. Um, many highlight the um, fills a little better, um, and they don't all look like that, of course, they can all look the same. But there are some more interesting areas that you don't see in regular light at all, um, and again, we're going to find out exactly what that means. Uh, and now we'll explain briefly what we started just from the regular sort of processes. Um, first, uh, with each photo we were working in smaller sections, we then reassembled them back into full mosaics so you can see uh, the entire commission with the full meal. Um, this one is actually a few of them layered together uh, to show what is original. Um, and apparently, uh, this is good news. I mean, the cracks are kind of scary, but uh, as far as the percentage that was expected to the original material, this is pretty high. Uh, back to the subject of metal detecting specifically, uh, this image uh, is actually from a completely different Chinese piece sold by Si Tung uh, in the 1940s to the Nelson Acting Museum. Uh, and due to its smaller size, they can actually x ray it. Uh, this gives you an example of what we believe to be going on. In our panels, um, but this is an example of the nice side of C six A, we believe, and we're not entirely sure how it would look uh, in messier panels. And for an example of that, uh, this is the um, a few panels actually from the bottom center of C four nine two, so the mural on the right. Uh, the dark red area is the result of the metal detection with the pink pointer uh, calibrated to no metal at all. So sensitive as it can be. Um, and even though they're symmetrical and in the same shape, they're very different on each side. Um, this is with the finer tuned um, metal detecting. And so now we understand that uh, for the panel on the left, they felt the need to reinforce it with two crossbars. Uh, why they did not look open, I'm not sure. And further, uh, we believe that this circle in the center is uh, the rebar that we're seeing in the X-ray. Um, however, somewhat confusingly, uh, instead of just shrinking to a smaller area, the central bar on the ground disappears. And we are thinking that that might be a support in back of the panel rather than a piece of metal reinforcing inside the panel. But again, we can't be certain until they you know. Um, also with metal detecting, you can uh, use two layers at the same time to show correlation, and this one is with the um, metal detection and cracks. Um, from this image and others like it, we can deduce that the metal rebar supports that are in the panels are likely the cause of the cracks, but whether it's an active issue or not. <laughs> and then we have a fake panel. Uh, while it's not very useful at a distance, uh, once you get up close to this panel uh, for the top of C492, uh, it's really obvious that it is not original. Um, this is a picture of C492 shortly after its accession in 1926, still missing some of the sections that were added later. Um, but there are a number of panels in this section uh, that are also not original, and we do not have them anymore. Um, we're not sure when exactly, but we would assume that when they got them, Fit column, the two is up to the right, um, that they realize there is an issue. Um, C692, so by a succession of rating, tell that it was a succession later, um, includes this panel to the left of the Buddha, um, who is Venus, for her, for her as such. Um, and she has the same accession number, and judging by uh, the reinforced lines that we marked on each individual panel, it looks an awful lot like they got this set with her put to the other side. Um, and that when they received it, obviously she doesn't fit because she overlaps with the other panel that we already had. Um, <coughs> so while we're not sure if this was done intentionally to like try to sell that Bodhisattva separately or by accident because it was received later that maybe the restoration process didn't have the rest of the girl for reference, we're not sure, but they came in, she got moved to where she actually belongs. The other uh, false panels were taken out, but not the one between the two heads. Not sure why. 
Um, we also believe that the figures of um, the moon and her attendant, uh, all the way to the left of C-492, um, are a little too high up. Um, this picture has, on one side, is how it actually is, and to the right is our recreation team Photoshop just shifting it down a little bit. And you'll see there are a couple of ribbons that suddenly line up a little better. Um, I'm not sure why she was that high up. And this image uh, is just C492 with all the little adjustments. And uh, with the moon attendant, or the moon, uh, you can tell that she lines up with the sun on the other side a little better now. Uh, overall, oddly, um, I guess given the grand scale of the mural itself, if I looked at it like this without the data lines, probably wouldn't notice that it's significantly different from how it is now, but I feel like it still could be changed in the future. And then finally, I think we also did some cleaning tests. You realize while we were doing the survey looking for other things um, that they're just very dusty. They're making large flat vertical surfaces, but uh, nine years of dust has definitely obscured the brightness of the paintings a little bit. Um, and so with uh, cosmetic sponges, no solvents or anything, and just dust it off the surface in a few places. Um, and this one, it's not really clear, we couldn't get the lighting just right, but um, at the bottom of this mustard colored area in the corner, uh, this is a little bit Unfortunately, it does make it a little shinier too. And then there's this one, which it looks like the flash blue out the center, but it's actually just cleaner. Um, it's, just for the record, this is in C688, so um, the panel to the left. Um, Top right hand corner is really something that looks strangely like a blue grenade. <laughs> but um, you can look at it. Like you can go upstairs and look at it. And it's really striking how bright it is. And you can't unsee it. I'm sorry. <laughs> and finally, we would just like to thank you all. Thank you for coming. And thank you to everybody who helped us. A uh, special <coughs> shout out for Molly Gleason who let us use her, uh, use her space while we were doing this project.